So here we have one of the problems that motivates the algorithm for our project, which is a schedule optimization problem. Here we have a giant data file which belongs to, so let's say, a high school, um, and contains all the courses offered by the high school. In the second column, it contains teachers who are teaching each of the courses. And then in the third, the last column, it contains a set of students who are taking these classes. So what we want to do is go from this messy data file to a very organized master schedule, which will contain the teachers teaching the courses, the courses that are being taught, and of course, the day, the period in the day in which they're being taught. And so in creating the schedule, we want to minimize the number of conflicts we have, both between rooms, which means that no two courses can take place in the same room at the same time, and also between students, which means that no one student can take two courses at the same time. And so a genetic algorithm is going to help us create the most fit schedule for this type of problem. So the way a genetic algorithm works is we first start with the initialization module. So we will create a population of schedules. Um, each of these little blocks represents a schedule in this case. So the initialization module will create a population of schedules that may have conflicts in them. We've generated them so that they have no room conflicts, but student conflicts are possible. Then we'll enter the evaluation module, which will basically evaluate how fit these schedules are. If a schedule has many conflicts, it's going to have a higher fitness score. So the best fitness score that we want is a fitness score of zero, which means the schedule is perfect. There are no conflicts. Um, usually, of course, this is not going to happen on the first try. Then we're going to go to the selection module, which will call the population. We'll take the top three-fifths of it, since the evaluation module will order them by how fit they are, from most fit to least fit. So we'll take the top three-fifths of them in the selection module, then we'll pair them up in the crossover module. So what happens is they're paired up with each other and then we're going to cross them with each other. So for any biologists out there, this is very similar to how chromosomes will interact. Um, we'll take part of the first one and put in the second one, part of the second one, put in the first one. And then after this, the children and the parents will enter the mutation module. And the mutation module will basically mutate the courses in a certain percentage of the population. Um, in this case, mutation means just randomly changing the time of one of the courses and time in the room of one of the courses in the schedule. Uh, and then after that, we enter it back into the evaluation module. In this case, if enough generations have um, gone through of this cycle, then we're going to stop. Or if a perfect schedule has been reached, then we're also going to stop and return the schedule. And that's basically, in a nutshell, how a genetic algorithm works. Okay, so now we're going to get around to actually implementing the code that we've written. So we navigate to the file directory, CS51 final project, and then we just type in python main.py, assuming that Python is already installed on the operating system. The code is going to prompt us for the number of class periods in the day. This obviously depends on what school you're at, but in this case, we're going to say at least six or seven, probably. So in this case, we say seven. On the number of classrooms in the school, um, probably between 20 to 40, so we'll just put 30 in this case, and the maximum number of generations. Now, this one is obviously up to the user to decide, but we do suggest um, entering a number between 1,000 and 10,000, depending on how long you're willing to wait, because obviously a 10,000 generation run is going to run a lot slower than a 1,000 generation run. But for time's sake here, we're just going to enter the number 100. This way we can see the results quicker. And with that, we just wait for the results to be generated. And it will generate for us a beautiful schedule here with the rooms on the side, the period in the day on the bottom, and what classes are in what rooms at what time. However, we do have to take a look also at the results printed here. Um, the algorithm tells us that a perfect solution was not found and then the best solution has a fitness of 1250. And the fitness score is a calculation of how many conflicts there are in the schedule. This is both between students, as I explained before, and also um, between rooms. So a, uh, between slots. a slot complex is going to have a score of 1000, which is going to jack up a score a lot. And a student complex is only going to have a value of 5. But with a lot of student complex, it can be raised a lot. So unfortunately, it does not produce a perfect schedule, but it does give us the best schedule it can find within 100 generations. 
So we gather data from one of our group members' high school who does this kind of scheduling optimization by hand. And in comparison with our algorithm, they were actually quite equivalent. So we were really encouraged by that. In addition, though, we would like our algorithm to run a bit faster because the best solutions do only come after about 10 minutes of the algorithm running, which is equivalent to about 15,000 generations. All in all, though, we're very content with how the algorithm turned out, and we're very glad to present it to you guys today. Thank you.